We had the big boys. Now we're bringing the small guys, 125 pounders. Both of these guys equaled one of the last guys. <laughs> yes. So Ricky George versus Matt Margoloni. You know, the biggest difference tends to be with these smaller guys is the motor. They just don't stop. Right. You know, they got cardio for days. And that's the one thing that we can bank on because we're bringing guys into the cage with very little experience. If I'm not mistaken, we're both, both o, o, and o. o and O. And you want guys that are in shape, and you want you want guys that are that are training properly, in shape, and are going to give it all they have. We don't know what each set of skills are that each one of these guys bring to the cage. We're going to find out now. Corner, Matt Margoloni. Matt Margoloni coming to us out of Springfield Submission Society, a school that we have seen here several times. They bring their athletes ready to go. And again, with Submission Society in the name of your school, we know he's going to be prepared for the ground. The crowd is still hyped from the from the leper. I was just gonna say we have a highly engaged crowd here. And the lep the leprechaun must be walking around and taking pictures. So Margaloni in the blue corner, you'll see the blue tape on the shin guards and the gloves. Very calm making his way into the cage. His opponent tonight, Ricky George. Fighting at a Henzo Gracie Academy Latham. Again, another school where if you're gonna represent them, they make sure you're prepared and ready. And his opponent making his way to the red corner, Ricky George. You know, uh, Ricky George is a well-known guy in the community around here. We see Roger Zapata, uh, Andrew Cherico, both Cage Wars veterans. Uh, Roger Zapata, pro fighter, was on the Ultimate Fighter. Yep. Again, a lot of people in his corner that are high level that, that have been preparing this young man. Now, you know, it's, it's not surprising why everybody's so excited to see his premiere. Yeah. And a nice, uh, a nice round of applause. And well, and the other coach you see there is Lenny Baker. Lenny Baker's a pro fighter and a coach down at the Kirby Cave at Joe Ussolini's wrestling school. So again, this young man's gonna be ready on the ground, as is his opponent. So sometimes that tends to neutralize each other, and this may end up on the feet. I'm excited. George versus Margoloni. It's our fifth of 14 fights here tonight, including three title fights. We'll bring it up to Mike Falvo in the cage. Another guy who looks like he came in here in really good shape, Will. I mean, you know, they are 125 pounds. It's hard to be fat at 125 <laughs> pounds on a guy. Moving on down the card for Cage Wars 57. Our upcoming contest scheduled for three three-minute rounds. It is in our flyweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in last night at 126 pounds. Representing the Springfield Submission Society out of Springfield, Massachusetts, Matt Magaloni. And his opponent, fighting across the cage out of the red corner. He weighed in last night at 126 pounds. Representing the Henzo Gracie Academy out of Latham, New York, Ricky George. And the man in charge of the action when that door closes is Dan Mergliata. Ricky George definitely bringing the hometown crowd. And I love to hear it. I absolutely love it. And that's got to give you a little bit of pep, right? You hear that. Oh, it really, it does. You know, it gives you a jolt of energy. If absolutely. You know. George in the red tape, red corner. His opponent in the blue. Ooh, nice kick. George looking to use those knees from the clinch. Double underhooks, looking for the trip, pushing him against the cage. 
Good head pressure, changing that level. And immediately we know what George is trying to do. Nice job. Ending up in side mount. Let's see if he can establish this position and stay here. Stay here. You see Margoloni looking to push with that right arm, bring the hips in, and, and at least bring him back to half guard. Looking for the neck. Margoloni fighting the hands. George looking very dominant in the grappling thus far. Again, we're only a minute into the first round, but very impressive so far. I would agree with that. As we, as we have seen though, they will stand these athletes up if they don't progress. Again, good job by George using some ground and pound, looking to pass the legs, looking to his corner for some instruction. You know, you would think at the moment it would be difficult to get instructions or at least comprehend instructions from your from your corner, but it's part of your training, isn't it? To, it, to listen for instructions. That's part of the training, and that's part of the slowing down on the ground, you know, establishing a position, controlling your opponent, allowing yourself to look up, hear your corner, and again, he's not that far away from, you know, the uh, Henzo Gracie corner. He's doing a nice job keep controlling this fight and controlling this round. And I take that as a sign, too, of being relaxed and alert as well because so many things are racing through your head in real time There's to be able to process. There's another human trying to hurt you. <laughs> and yet you still have the ability to process instructions coming at you from 10, 15 feet away. So he looks like, uh, he looks uh, he looks seasoned for his first time in the cage and he's doing some damage right now. Margoloni, you know, happy to keep him in half guard at this point. Half guard in full rules is much more dangerous than it is in this novice rule set. Margoloni looking to get that hip in. And you say George that. trapping that left leg so he can move around the corner. Nice job. That's an interesting point that you bring up in terms of the positioning on the body and what's more adv advantageous in novice. It's all about where you can land those strikes. Yes, and in half guard uh, yep. in full rules, it's nice. Neon belly transitioning to mount. Less than a minute left. Coming up on the final 30, what can Ricky George do with this position? Even if he does nothing, a really good round one so far for uh, Ricky George. Round. This could be considered a 10-8, you know, more so even than that last fight. I would say so. The only thing is he didn't really, inf like, inflict any damage that would make me feel like, ooh. True, but again, the control time throughout that whole round mm. was just huge. Yep. Final 10 seconds. And again, you know, all the judges have seen is Ricky George dominate on the ground. Well, if you're Ricky George right now, it's more of the same, but if you're Margoloni, it's time to switch up the approach. Yeah, I would say to keep it on the feet, try to keep some distance. You know, he opened up with that nice kick, put some hands with it, and just try to use some lateral movement. Don't let Ricky George get into those hips. Again, Andrew Chirico, Cage Wars veteran, Henzo Gracie black belt in the corner. And you see him giving them very detailed instructions, you know. This is not just a, a hoorah session. This is a technique adjustment in the middle of this round. And again, very relaxed, listening to his instructions. They're even having a, they're having a conversation. Yeah, it, it almost looks like they're talking <laughs> yeah, in the gym, you know, like it's just an, another round in the gym. Here we go, corners are out. Very Margoloni impressed. pops up off that stool. I think he's got something to prove in this Well, Margoloni's got to land some hands here. Margoloni and Ricky George, round number two. Thank you guys for watching on Stimulus.com. We're live at Rivers Casino in Schenectady, Cage Wars 57. And it's an honor to be alongside my man, Will Berry, here. My name is Brian. Thanks for watching there the action. There we go. There that it is. To the feet, but again, you know, Ricky George closes the distance, changes the level, sucks the foot into the, uh, the leg into the hip. But Margoloni's showing that he can. Nice single uh, leg. Yeah, the ground game just too good for Ricky George right now. And again, Margoloni's not been in any major trouble with submissions, but he's not been able to, you know, hit reversals, hit sweeps. You know, it's pretty much been what Ricky George wants to do when he wants to do it. You see him acknowledge his corner, he looks up, they shouted some instructions to him. You see Margoloni looking for an underhook on the right side, trying to create some distance, left foot in the hip. Getting to his left hip, creating some distance. You know, he tried to, to hip bump there, but Ricky George being heavy, doing a good job, keeping that center of gravity. Oh 
more the same in round number two as it was round number one for Ricky George. We're about a minute into our second round, and it's been all Ricky George at this point. Margaret Laney looking to try to roll him to the right side. George aware of it, doing a good job. Using that knee to the body, we Very need to nice. see more of that. You know, and again, that makes his opponent move. It, it says, I don't want to be there anymore. Trying to take the back. Good job controlling, not, not ground and pound to the face. Yeah, and Margoloni, Margoloni's attempt to get up is really, it, it appears that he's putting himself in harm's way, but he's acting out of desperation at this point. He is, and he's doing some right things. He's getting to hips. He's trying to hip bump. You know, he's trying to create distance. He's fighting hands, but R the pressure of Ricky George and, you know. Those, these, these punches are big, and they're landing, by the way. They are, and he's not just settling for a position. See him stepping over there to half mount. Great job by Ricky George. This is absolute domination as we approach one minute to go in round two of three. So again, you see his opponent doing the right thing, getting that right knee into the belly. He better try to wall walk. Not a good position to be in with Ricky George on top. Yeah, Ricky George is sort of methodically wearing his opponent down. Looking to attack that arm maybe, nope. And again, his opponent rolled, but Ricky George ends up on the opposite side mount. Just a good job staying connected to Matt Margoloni. How do you like what Ricky George is doing on the ground technique-wise? I like it. I like that he added the knees. I like that he's making putting the forearm into the face. Because even though you can't ground and pound, you can make it miserable for your opponent. He's got a lot of tricks, and we are seeing the knees from the ground, and pound, the ground which we don't see all that often. And the key is to make your opponent move. So if you got that forearm in the throat, forearm in the face, it's making them uncomfortable. They don't want to stay there. If the first round wasn't 10-8, I'd have to say the second round certainly was well. I, was I would agree. This is a dominant performance. That was impressive round number two for Ricky George. Real good. Real good. You know, and I think if you're Ricky George right now, you want to come out in this third round with a statement and end it. Fight fans, this is our third and final round. So, well, I know when you were, you know, you won more than you than you didn't win in, in your in your I, I career. I did not. I did not. Oh. I did not. I was one and two in MMA, oh. four and four combat sports in general. Dang it! Well, now you made a liar out of me. But so you've been in Margoloni's position before. <laughs> I have. I've lost decisions before. <laughs> you know, you not competed at my best. You know, there's a frustration in there because you prepare yeah. for how many weeks. You know, you right. put how many. How many sacrifices, how much blood, sweat, and tears you put into this camp? Is, is, there, is there a part of you, if you're Margoloni, you just want to throw caution into the wind, forget technique, you just, you just want to do something, to. right? And it's you, frustrating. You have to bang right now in the third round. In the words of Julian Lane, let me bang, bro. But credit to Ricky George because he's been great this fight, and he's obviously up two rounds to one, and last round may have been a 10-8. Or two rounds to nothing, I should say. Third round. But again, you see Margoloni light on his feet. You know, he's not willing to accept this loss. Looks like he landed inside leg kick, or at least went for it. Look at his corners now cheering him on. Margoloni, and good job by George. And Margoloni, or uh, yeah, George willing to engage to get the takedown. You know, he's not going to fake those punches. He's willing to take some and give some to get to this position. Well, it's probably the worst thing that could have happen for Margoloni at this point. Again, side mount, he's trying to get that left knee in, doing a good job, but pushed up against the cage, he's not gonna be able to spin to the left to establish a guard. This is about a, as dominant of a three round performance as we'll see in Cage Wars. It really is, and again, and I think that if this was an advanced rule set, this would not be going the full three rounds at this point. And by, and by on, that you mean the control on top for George has been so dominant that if he was able to utilize that ground and pound of the face, you know, it would make his opponent move that much more so he would be able to likely hit a submission or get a ref stop. I agree. I'm not sure that I've ever seen somebody land as many ground strikes in novices as, as he's uh, done here tonight. No, he's done a beautiful job mixing it up, knees, punches, making it a miserable place to be for his opponent. You know, you, you have to remember that the area, the surface area is not is, is not the head, which is where you naturally are inclined to go, and it's the part of the body that is the most exposed, and he's doing a darn good job. He's probably landed 30 ground strikes. You know, and periodically you see him look up at the ref, you see him look at his corner. He's very aware of what's going on right now. He's finding that calm in the proverbial chaos. Impressed tonight with Ricky George. 
It's you got see Margoloni trying to you know, trap down that arm, maybe looking for a roll, but with George being as heavy as he's been on top, I don't see that happening. One minute left, Brian. Very, very impressive. Not taking anything away from Margoloni, but George has been the better man here tonight. And again, he's doing a nice job with his head. You see him put his head into the chin and on the face of Margoloni, so he's keeping pressure with the body, but also down pressure with the head, and that just sucks to be on the bottom. And, Mar yeah, and Margoloni just looks absolutely frustrated at this point. There's nothing that he could do. He was like caught in a, a spider web for three rounds. And again, you see George, he didn't even want to attack the <sighs> neck there for the submission. He just wanted to get him back down on the ground and deliver some punishment. And George is just delivering blows everywhere. I like the cut of this guy's jib. Mm. Gotta be careful there. And again, you see that head pressure up against that cage. That is a miserable place to be. He hops to side mount. Less than 20 seconds left to go in our third and final round. Margoloni playing defense, looking to give up his back to get to the feet. Big shots. Less than 10 seconds, Brian. Here we go. Again, miserable, making it miserable for him, pushing <laughs> the head down. Yo, George, uh, Ricky George has got some dog in him. He, he There's does. another guy to be on the lookout for. Just a dominant performance here, Ricky George over Matt Margoloni. Both of our fighters giving it everything that they've got, but it was a little too much for Margoloni here at Cage Wars 57. But certainly, you can't hang your head. First time in the cage, up against a, a, a guy who, who came in here with a plan and was able to execute his plan for three full rounds. Certainly a frustrating night for Matt Margoloni. But all credit to Ricky George, who was just dominant in three rounds here tonight. It'll be interesting to see uh, the judges' scorecards if there were, if there was a 10-8 round. At, the, at this point, it's just that's just window dressing. I think it's a pretty obvious three-round and nothing decision here for Ricky George. As we continue here with Cage Wars 57, we're live from Rivers Casino and Resort here in. Schenectady on St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. March Madness weekend. Lots of action happening in Albany, Schenectady, all throughout the Capital Region. We appreciate you all watching on Stimulus.com. The decision is in. We'll turn it up to Mike Falvo in the cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds, we go to the official scorecard. All three judges have scored the fight 30-27 for your winner by way of unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Ricky Jorge.